Jesus Christ said, I am the beginning. You love ten on the I am legal. the beginning you and the ending. The I am the first the Bible, the and the phrase. last. First phrase, I am the Alpha the and the Omega. You love and all those legal. titles are attributed to Jesus Christ. The Alpha and the Omega are the first and the last letters of the Greek you alphabet. Lot, you lot making and movies. Jesus Christ said, I am the Alpha. That is, I am the A, and I am the Omega, I am the Z. So everything that happens in this world happens within God's purpose. And God has said, I am the beginning and the ending. Jesus Christ says the same, I am the beginning and the ending. Jesus himself said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. So why do you say, show us the Father? Because they were asking, his disciples were asking him to show them God. And he said, have I been so long time with you? And yet you have not known me. He that has seen me has seen God, has seen the Father. So why do you say, show us God, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The works that I do, they declare that I've come out from the Father. The words that I speak, Jesus said they're not mine, they're the Father's that sent me. Amen. So everything that Jesus Christ did was to glorify the Father. Sometimes the Muslims say to me, if Jesus Christ said, here I am, I'm God, worship me, then I'll believe in him. But they wouldn't believe in him because Jesus Christ did not come to glorify himself. He came to glorify the Father. That's why he said, I am come in my Father's name and you don't believe me. If another comes in his own name, him you will believe. How can you believe that receive glory of men and seek not the glory that comes from God alone? And Jesus Christ made it very clear to us that he had come in his father's name yes, yes. and that every man should honor the son of God right. even as they honor God the father yeah, yeah. Jesus said if you do not honor the son of God yes. then you don't honor God Amen. because the son has come out from the father yes, so those people who dishonor the son of God are dishonoring God yes, because sir. Jesus Christ is the only manifestation of God Amen. in our humanity. That's why he came into the world to reveal God to us. No one else has ever done that. But in Jesus Christ, all the DNA that was in him, all the blood that flowed in Jesus' veins was the blood of God. Amen. It was what God had planted within Mary. It was God's seed, Jesus Christ is the seed of the woman because she was not born of Joseph and Mary. She was conceived, Jesus Christ was conceived by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And he is declared to be the Son of God with power. Now my friend asked me to, yesterday if I would speak to you today about the false the declarations about the coming of Christ. Jesus Christ, when he was asked by his disciples, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel at this time? He said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father, God the Father, has put in his own power. So it's, it's not for us to know. If we knew the day and the hour of Jesus coming, then we'd probably engage our lives for that very event, those who believe. But you see, no man knows the day or the hour. And Jesus Christ himself, who was omniscient, he knew everything. He knew what the angels thought. He knew what the Father thought. And he knew what he thought. And he said, no man knows the day or the hour of his coming. No, not the angels in heaven, not the sun, not the sun even. He, he said, not even I know the day of the coming, of my coming. 
by the Father only. Why did Jesus Christ conceal from us the day of his return, his coming again? Well, I'll tell you the answer to that. Because God is a long-suffering God, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. So because of God's long suffering, that day of Jesus' return has not come yet. If Jesus were to come today, all of you who are not Christians would be condemned to an eternity of damnation. So it is in the long suffering of God that this world has not been destroyed yet, that Jesus Christ has not returned yet because of the long suffering of God willing that people should come to repentance. And that is what God's purpose is. So of course we don't know the day or the hour. But my friend here told me yesterday that there were millions of people on YouTube. He told me the day before yesterday that millions of people on the internet expected Jesus Christ to come back yesterday. Well, it never happened, did it? He didn't come. He didn't come in some Korean president, as some people say, Sun Myung Moon said he was Jesus Christ, come back to this world again. Some of the Rastafarians, they believe that Haile Selassie was Jesus Christ coming back again. But he wasn't. Jesus said that when he comes again, it will be like the lightning shining from the east even unto the west. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Everyone in the world simultaneously will see Christ coming in all his glory with all the holy angels with him. But concerning that coming, no man knows the day nor the hour. And that is why God is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So Jesus Christ did not declare the day of his return. But what he did say is this. He said, in the last days, whosoever kills you will think that he's doing God's service. He warned us that. In John chapter 16, he said, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he is doing God's service. And so he warned us before. In these days we had people killing others in the name of religion, thinking they're doing God's service. But concerning the coming of Christ, when they asked him, what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? This is what Jesus Christ said, and I'm gonna read it to you. And if you've got your Bible with you, you can read it together with me. In Luke chapter 21, this is what Jesus Christ said. Take heed that ye be not deceived. Take heed that ye be not deceived. So what our Lord was telling us is that before his coming, there will be great deception all over this world. We're not to be surprised that there are so many religious cults and there are so many different practices that pass for the name of religion, but those people have never been born of God. So we are told, we are told that there will be great deception. Take heed, Jesus said, that no man deceive you. Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name. We've got an African man from Nigeria. He usually comes up here every week. He says, La Mumba Mumba, is Jesus Christ come back in, in Nigeria? Of course he isn't. Because when Jesus Christ comes, it will be with all the holy angels with him. And he will come to judge the world in righteousness. So many shall come in my name, he says, saying, I am. I am. What does the word I am come from? Jehovah. That's where they get the name Jehovah. I am that I am. I am that I am. And that's when God revealed himself to Moses at the burning bush. He said, I am that I am. And so many people will come 
saying Jehovah. We've got a, a lot of people call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. They're coming saying, we're the right way. We're the only way. Of course they're not. They are deceivers. They are deceivers. And they are deceiving people into trying to believe in a false Christ. The JWs, as they call themselves, many times they've said that Jesus Christ would come again. He never came. They are therefore false prophets. I don't call them Jehovah's Witnesses. I call them Russellites because they're followers of Charles Taze Russell. They have said many times that Jesus Christ would come back. He never came. They said yesterday, millions of people, that he would come back. He never came. The Seventh-day Adventists are a little bit more intelligent because when Jesus, when Jesus Christ did not come back, when the Seventh-day Adventist said he would come back, they said, oh, he came into the the uh, sanctuary, the heavenly sanctuary above earth, and he's going to come again a little bit later. So they changed it because they got it wrong. And many people have got the date wrong because no man knows the day or the hour of the coming of the Son of Man when it is. But Jesus Christ did say, many shall come in my name saying, I am. I am Christ, I am He, and shall deceive many. And they shall also say, the time draweth near. The time is drawing near. He says, go ye not therefore after them. So many people will be saying, oh Jesus Christ is coming tomorrow. He's coming the next day. Don't go after them. Because he's coming as a lightning. And just as it was in the days of Noah. What were they doing in the days of Noah? They were eating. They were drinking. They were marrying. They were giving in marriage. They were buying. They were selling. They were building. They were planting until suddenly the flood came and they were not expecting it. They didn't expect that there would be a great deluge that would drown the whole world. They weren't expecting Jesus Christ to come again. And in the days of Noah, there were only eight souls saved by water. Only eight. When God destroyed the cities, the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sodomy, because of their homosexual practices, because of their pride, because of their fullness of bread, because of their abundance of idleness, when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, only three people were delivered. So you better make sure that you're one of those who are saved by faith in Jesus Christ if you would avoid that terrible day of God's judgment that is coming on this world. And it will not be, it will not be as a flood. God has promised that he will never again destroy this earth with a flood. And he has made the rainbow. God has given us the bow in the sky to show us he will never again destroy the world with a flood. And the homosexuals have even taken that rainbow and tried to make it their logo. What an abomination. It's a covenant promise of God that he will never again destroy the world with a flood. The next time the world is destroyed will be by fire. And the fire is going to burn up the air, the earth, the fire, and the water. It's all going to melt. And that's what's going to happen when Jesus Christ comes back again. The heavens and the earth, which are now, will be burned up with fervent heat, and they shall be destroyed. And the interesting thing is that in the last 20 years, those people, there is today, there's a brainwashing. Today, people are trying to brainwash you into thinking that global warming is something that is happening in this world. There is, there is no global warming. In the last 20 years, the earth has not changed its temperature. The temperature of this earth is exactly the same as it was. 20 years ago. The temperature has not grown any warmer than 20 years ago. 
And so the temperature of this world is not warming up. There is no such thing as global warming. And the Pope is trying to champion the cause of global warming so he can seduce everybody and make them believe in him. And so everybody will follow after the Pope as a world ruler. But he's not going to be my ruler. The Pope is not going to reign over the United Kingdom. Thank God that we have been brought out of the European Union. We are not a part of global warming. We are not a part of the homosexual agenda. No. Thank God that our nation was established in righteousness by the Holy Bible by the word of God. That's what made Great Britain great. That's what made us a great nation because Jesus Christ has made this colonize? nation what it is. Did that teach and that is, why, that is why many of you are over here and you're not in Saudi Arabia. You come to England because you want to live in a good country. What made the country good? It was the Bible. It was the word of God. It was the Christian faith that made this country what it is it was not it was not money it was not european economics that made this country what it is no on the contrary when ted heath the conservative politician when he took us into europe it was under false pretenses there was no mandate from the British people to go into a European Union. It was meant to be just a trading of states. But they took us in. Ted Heath, the Conservative Prime Minister, took this country into Europe under false pretenses. And it's a good thing that we've come out of that European super state, which is built on the Tower of Babel, the broken down Tower of Babel. I don't know if any of you are artists here. But some of you might have seen Bruegel's painting of the broken down Tower of Babel. Well, the European Union are trying to build up the Tower of Babel again to make the world of one religion. How are they doing it? By brainwashing people that we are going through global warming. We are not. There's no global warming. And that's why they want you all to be of one mind, controlled by the media controlled by the computer and sooner or later messages are sent through the computer to brainwash the people into thinking that everyone's a god in his own right that everybody can attain to godhood by their own religions or by their own works or by their own practices but you can never come to god by your own efforts the only way that you can come to god is acknowledging that you're a sinner and that you need a savior because the lie that the woman fell for from the devil in the garden of eden was the lie that you'll be equal with god and that was original sin to make man think that he's a god in his own right to make man think that he can attain to nirvana or a state of extinction or a state of equality with god by his works by his efforts by his will worship Man can never attain to equality with God by any of his own efforts. It is God who has come to us in the person of Jesus Christ to pay the penalty for sin. You see, God required justice. His justice required a penalty to be paid for sin, a penalty to his justice. And that penalty was death. God said, the soul that sins, it shall die. And so death came into the world because of sin. And that's why death has come on the whole human race, because of sin. And it was that sin that separates man from God. Man dies to pay the penalty to God's justice. The only way the penalty could be removed is by Jesus Christ dying in the place of sinners to reconcile sinners to himself to suffer the justice of God against sin in his own body and that is why today we are rejoicing we're glad because when we believed on Jesus Christ 
and him crucified, our sins were laid upon him, and we do not bear them anymore. And when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your sin will be laid upon him, and you will bear it no more. Amen. It will be imputed Amen. to him. Amen. And that is why we are glad today, because our sins were laid upon Jesus Christ, and all the righteousness of God that was in Jesus Christ was given to us as believers in him. So now we are clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And God wants to clothe every one of you in his own righteousness. When you have the righteousness of God, it's not a righteousness according to the law. The Apostle Paul, when he was named Saul of Tarsus, he tried as a Jew, a religious Jew, to attain this amazing standard, trying to keep everything written in the law to do it. But at the end of the day, he realized that he couldn't fulfill everything that God required of man in the law, that he needed a savior. But when he heard of Jesus Christ, who was without sin, who obeyed the law of God perfectly, when he heard of him, he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus Christ visited the apostle Paul on the road to Damascus in Syria. And he revealed himself as the glorified Christ above the brightness of the sun. And Paul was blinded. But Jesus Christ said to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And Saul was persecuting Jesus Christ by committing Christians to prison, by trying to kill Christians. There are, some, there are some religions today that want to kill the Jews and the Christians, but that's not of God. That's not of God. And Jesus Christ did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Jesus Christ did not come to commit any suicide bombing. He came to lay down his life for his friends. He came to give his life as a ransom for many and then to take it up again. And Jesus Christ has overcome the devil. He's overcome death. He's overcome sin. All of those of you who want to be free from your sin, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved by faith in him. We are justified. We are declared righteous by God. That's what justified means, by believing on Christ. Justification is by faith. As Martin Luther discovered 500 years ago this year at the Reformation, Martin Luther saw justification is by faith, not by Islamic works, not by the Hajj, not by your Salah, not by your Zakah, not by your Ramadan, not by your Shahada, but by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. What about works? By the finished work what about works? of our Lord Jesus what Christ. About works? By Jesus Christ, who said, Father, I have I finished talk, yeah. the work the the which Bible. thou gavest me to do. I've finished the work. Jesus Christ has done all the work that is necessary for your salvation. All you need to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, saved from sin, saved from the damnation of hell, saved from everlasting burning. What a terrible thing it will be for people to go down into hell weeping and wailing and crying for the mountains and the rocks to hide them from the face of Jesus Christ who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. What a terrible thing it will be when this world is weeping and wailing, cast away from God into the damnation of hell forever and ever because they did not believe on the only begotten Son of the living God, Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. So glad to see you, brother. Praise God. You take care of yourself.